There are so many things in Starfield that the game never tells you. Little secrets that make the game so much easier that I had to share them with all of you in this video. We've got 13 total secrets in all to unravel, and each one gets progressively more useful. So make sure to watch all the way until the end, because number 13 on this list is absolutely insane. But number one is probably the most ridiculous of all. That's because in Starfield, you can steal anything that you want from a vendor's shelves and displays by literally making them run away from their shop. Now, this is one of my favorite tricks in the game lately, and it's all possible thanks to this skill in the social tree called manipulation. The manipulation skill turns most NPCs into mindless followers, letting you direct them to go pretty much anywhere you want, though I am honestly surprised that this skill actually works on NPC vendors because all you have to do is manipulate them to make them walk to an area where they cannot see you steal all of their displayed items. Sending them around the corner or to a back room, closing the door behind you works totally fine for this trick, but keep in mind that you only have about 30 seconds before the manipulation effect wears off. However, you can always manipulate the same NPC again by leaving an area and coming right back. I know what you're thinking, this skill is way too deep in the skill tree for most builds to possibly use, requiring 12 total skill points invested in the previous skills to unlock the tier four master skills. But that leads us to our next secret, which is how to unlock manipulation completely free without investing in any previous skills at all. All you need to do for this is join the Ryujin faction in the city of Neon and begin accepting their missions. Ryujin is one of the best factions in Starfield when it comes to rewards, as you'll get tons of credits, weapons, an outfit, a stealth suit, and eventually rank one of manipulation completely free. Now you can even redo the Ryujin missions in New Game Plus to unlock further ranks of manipulation if you want to, now, I won't spoil how you get this effect. Like I said, it comes from the faction story missions, but trust me, it is well worth the time it takes to complete these missions given the high level of this skill. Let's say you do get caught stealing in Starfield and you don't want to lose all of those stolen items or get thrown in jail and potentially lose experience. Well, if you are fast enough with your pause menu, you can actually fast travel out of your current location before any nearby guards arrive to arrest you. Now you will still have a bounty with whatever faction you stole from, but if you fast travel to another faction area, like let's say the Freestar Collective if coming from United Colonies or vice versa, you can then use their bounty clearance kiosk to completely remove any record of your wrongdoings while also keeping all of your stolen items for a few credits of course. And speaking of credits, did you know that you can make even more credits from selling your stolen items in Starfield? particularly if that item is either a weapon or a piece of armor. But that's because most weapon and armor values will be increased substantially by just adding a few mods to that item, like a new barrel, a new muzzle, some extra ballistic shielding, pretty much anything that you want. If you do this before selling the item, not only can you increase your crafting skills, but you can also make some extra credits now that the item has a higher value. Now, this trick is also amazing. If you want to keep the weapon or armor for yourself, as modding the item also completely removes the stolen tag, meaning you don't have to sell the item to a trade authority vendor and buy it back if you need a clean version of that item fast or a trade authority merchant isn't around. Simply add any basic mod as we said, and you'll get a new version of that item without the stolen tag, meaning you won't need to give it back if you get caught stealing in the future. And to steal anything that isn't literally nailed down, you can also try using Starfield's actual in-game physics to move those items away from prying eyes before casually adding them to your inventory without anyone noticing. For this trick, all you need is some items that you want to steal on a elevated surface, something like a table or a desk, and a physical container to place those items into, like a box or a trash can. In this example, I'm gonna steal a few thousand credits from these gamblers at Red Mile. First, you wanna grab a nearby trash can or other container by holding down the use button. That's either the A button on Xbox or the E key on PC and place the trash can underneath the table. Then pick up any other flat item that isn't classified as stolen loot. Plates tend to work really good for this. And as you're picking up the second item, you either press right trigger or left trigger on Xbox or left or right click on PC to rotate this item to scoop or slide whatever you want to steal into that waiting container. Finally, once the container is full, take it back into some closed off area, like a bathroom or a bedroom, and then just grab all of your loot where nobody can see you. And if you're feeling especially lucky, you can even trick shot stolen items into containers 
with live rounds from your gun. Uh, most NPCs in the game don't really seem to care about this, which is hilarious. So in our first Starfield Secrets video, which you should check out if you haven't already, we talked about using the game's transfer menu when looting, not only to pause the active combat around you, but also so you can see how items look and their complete stats before deciding to pick them up. But you should definitely be looting as many weapons off of dead NPCs as you can, because those weapons will also add extra rounds of ammo to your inventory as well. Now, the amount of ammo that you get seems to depend on how much the NPC actually used in combat, which means if you kill an enemy faster before they fire enough shots, you will get more ammo left in the clip, even potentially hundreds of rounds if the enemy has a heavy weapon. So make sure to do that even if you just end up dropping the weapon or giving it to your companion. Of course, keeping these extra weapons to sell off later is a great idea. You can be using your companion's inventory to help you carry around these extra items, but you can even expand on your companion's carry capacity significantly by equipping them with certain gear pieces with specific traits. For example, you could give your companion a spacesuit with a mechanized trait for extra carrying capacity, or my favorite, the weapons holstering trait, which is even more powerful. This one reduces the weight of all carried weapons by 50%, which is a massive bonus, especially on heavy weapons. Now, I find this works great with the adoring fan as your companion, if you don't mind him too much, because he also has the highest base carry capacity of any companion in Starfield due to his weightlifting perk. You can also unlock another 50 kilograms of carrying capacity for all companions with rank two of the leadership skill and even more carrying for the adoring fan with rank four, again to his physical crew skill of weightlifting. And if you want to mod in more of those unique traits for yourself or your companions, you'll obviously need to level up weapon and space suit crafting, which can seem like a daunting task at first, requiring you to craft dozens of mods. However, the secret to leveling up these crafting skills fast is much easier than you might think. All you need to do is mod one single weapon over and over by continually adding something basic, a cheap mod like the compensator muzzle, for example. Craft this onto your weapon and then craft it back to the unmodded status. This will actually count for a second modded weapon. Then mod on the compensator muzzle again for a third crafted weapon and so on. Just repeat these steps over and over until you've maxed out your crafting skill for all four ranks as the new mods you can get in these crafting skill trees are definitely worth the extra effort and the extra skill points. Speaking of crafting, you probably discovered by now that in Starfield, most crafting components are much easier to acquire by purchasing them from vendors rather than harvesting them yourself. And because these components can also be incredibly heavy when stacked up, you often want to keep these items in your ship cargo because your cargo inventory is also accessible from any crafting station, letting you pull out and craft with whatever items you have. Now, the secret here is you can also easily transfer any item from your own inventory directly to your ship's cargo as long as you are within 250 meters of your ship and within the same basic location. It's for this reason that I try to purchase all of my crafting components in cities like New Atlantis or Aquila City because their resource vendors are close enough to the landing area that I can simply purchase what I need and then instantly drop all those heavy resources into my cargo. To do this, simply stock up on what you need from that vendor, then open your ship menu and select cargo. Next, use Q or the left bumper to switch from your ship inventory to your own. And finally, select your resources tab and choose store all resources. Like I said, New Atlantis is a great location for this if you're using the Jemison Mercantile Store, or this also works well in Aquila City using Shepherd's General Store. Also, don't forget that you can wait 48 local hours to restock any items you might need to buy more of from that vendor. And if you're looking to make some extra credits, two things you can do quickly and easily throughout the game is collect Old Earth books and sell news stories to the Settled Systems News Network. Now, for the specific books you're looking for, it's just Old Earth titles, things like Dracula, War of the Worlds, Moby Dick, anything but Charles Dickens. Now, you're going to bring these to Sinclair's Books, located in Aquila City, for an easy 2,000 credits per title, though you can only sell each title once, and she won't buy any duplicates. Like we said, you can also sell news stories about your various in-game exploits to the Settled Systems News Network station, located in New Atlantis. Let's head over to the commercial district there, find the SSNN building, which is located near the top of the district next to the Valberg building. When you're there, you can speak to Nadia, who's always looking for the next exclusive story 
and you can tell her about a variety of things that you've done, such as the pirate attack at the beginning of the game on Vectera. And speaking of which, if you want to make a little extra sympathy money here in the Valberg building, next to SSNN is the Argos Extractor's headquarters, where you can tell them about that same pirate attack at the beginning of the game and demand some extra compensation. Now, another big secret in Starfield is that some weapons have more than one way of firing. We did talk about this in my previous video where we mentioned how mining lasers work in Starfield where you can focus the beam for increased damage and mining speed. But there is actually another weapon in the game with an even more powerful secondary attack and that is the Mag Sniper Rifle. In this case, if you hold down the trigger without letting go, you can charge up your next round, doing significantly more damage than a standard aimed or hip fired shot. This was the only other weapon I found so far with additional firing mechanics, so if you know of any others, do us a favor and let us know in the comments section below. But now you may have been curious about Aurora, the psychotropic drug found in Neon, and whether this has an actual useful purpose. On the surface, it does look very powerful as a consumable chem in Starfield, it has the effect of slowing down time by 40% for 10 seconds, which is definitely impressive. But it also comes with several problems that far outweigh any benefit that you might have for this item, especially in combat. For one, Aurora is extremely addictive. And believe me, you do not want to get addicted to any chems in this game due to negative side effects. But beyond that, Aurora is also considered contraband, which makes it extremely hard to travel with, and it is expensive, so there's not really much use for this. Now, there is a far better alternative also available in Neon, which can give you the same powerful time-slowing effect in combat while also being cheaper, non-addicting, and free to travel. This is called Blend, and it's basically a watered-down version of Aurora with some extra additives thrown in. Blend can be purchased for a few hundred credits from Legrands, located in the Neon Core District, and it is fantastic for combat. Not only do you still get Aurora's time slowing effect, but you also get the same damage reduction effect that you usually get from other drinks in Starfield, making it an even better option for combat in my opinion. But not only that, as a food or drink item, Blend's effects will be improved by the nutrition skill in Starfield, which at rank 4 is going to upgrade this drink from 20% time slow to 30%, and 75 damage resistance to over 100. Not bad for a few hundred extra credits. Which brings us to the final and by far the most useful secret I know in Starfield, and that's how to get your own personal vendor with a one hour inventory reset. This solves one of the most common problems in Starfield, which is finding a vendor with enough credits so that you can sell all of your items. Usually you have to wait 48 local hours to reset any vendor and their credit supply, which depending on the planet can take a long time while you literally just sit there and wait. However, there is one random vendor in Starfield which completely solves this problem, though it is a challenge to find. So to get started with this, head to the planet Venus in the Sol system and land on the surface anywhere you want. But what we are looking for is a random location called a settlement. After you land, just scan every location within the visible area, basically those little dots on your watch. If scanning all of these will reveal more about that location. What we want first is an unknown structure which has this specific icon on your scanner. Scanning this should reveal more about what the type of structure is. These can include abandoned buildings which look like this, there's mining rigs, there's a lot of other types. But basically what you want here is the igloo icon which is a NPC settlement. Each time you land on a different tile on the planet, you'll get completely random possible locations. And I had to land around 15 to 20 different times before I actually got what I wanted. Again, it is random, so there is some luck involved here, but it is easy too, because all you have to do is land, scan everything in the area, and if you don't see that igloo icon, just take off and try again. So what's great about the igloo or the NPC settlement is obviously you're gonna have a trader here and they sell ammo, resources, and aid items, but will also buy anything that you want to sell. Plus, they can also repair, modify, and upgrade your ships at the same time, which is crazy. Now, I'm sure you can find random vendors like this on any other planet in the game, but the reason why we want to find them on Venus is because one hour of waiting on this planet equals 100 hours in local time, meaning you just need to wait one hour and you have the quickest vendor reset here in the game by far. That means you'll get more credits, more ammo to buy, more aid supplies and resources if you need them, 
very, very quickly. So once you find this vendor, you are pretty much set as far as selling and buying in Starfield. You can fast travel back here at any time. Just make sure not to land on any new random locations on the planet Venus, because if you do that, you could potentially lose this location on your map, and you definitely don't want to do that. But there you go, 13 more useful Starfield secrets that the game never explains. I hope you all found this video informative, and if you did, do me a favor and crush that like button so that YouTube knows to share this video with others. It is much appreciated. Let me know down in the comments section what other secrets I might have missed. And make sure to check out our other videos like the best Starfield start and the best Starfield builds. Thanks again for watching and I will see you there.